Okay, today is another day to practice all the different ways that we can use percents and beware that you're answering the question. So sometimes we can ask for how much you're saving on a sale, sometimes we can ask for what is the percentage that you're savings, and then sometimes we can ask for what is the actual sale price. So be sure to do a quick check and see if your answer is reasonable. So just as a review, um, if you had a $50 item and the store marked it up by 30%, uh, and you were asked to find the retail price, what we had done before is this is a two-step process. You first find 30% of the 50, and then you add it on to the 50 so that the final retail price is 30% above 50. So you can do this with a proportion, and you'd use the percent proportion to find what 30% of 50 is, and you see that the answer is $15. But that wouldn't really make sense if you do a quick check because the retail price is always above the wholesale. So you you think, what do I have to do next? I add the 15 to that starting price, so I get a $65 retail price. Now, the thing that we had mentioned last time that we now want you to kind of focus on is how to do this with the equivalent decimal. So again, we're finding 30% of 50, so we're looking for a part. And when you translate this to math, this is 30% of 50. So 30% as a decimal is 0.3. Of means multiply. So if you multiply 0.3 times 50, you notice that we get the same $15 part. So then you just add the 15 to the starting value, and we get the same answer, 65. Today where we're going with this is if instead of doing this in two steps, markups you would have to add at the end, discounts you would have to subtract, we can go ahead and do the adding and subtracting with this percentage. So if you look at what we're going to do today, this value and this value give you the $65, but in a slightly different way. Because you figured if I multiply something by 1, I have all of itself, and then if I have something 1 and a little bit more, then that represents the 30% that you're adding on. So if you have something above uh, what it started with, this is going to be a markup. Uh, and you get the same answer in one step. So with number two, if it's a discount, we're just working in the opposite direction. So a $95 item is 45% off, so what's the sale price? With equivalent decimals in two steps, you can do this. 45% of 95. This is not answering the question if I say 0.45 times 95. This is answering how much I am saving. So you figured this is a little bit less than half of 95, so that's a reasonable answer. So the final step I would have to do if this is what I'm saving means that I'm subtracting that from its original price. So 95 minus that gives you a sale price of $52.25. Now, if we're going to do the same one-step method um, that we had done up here, 45 percent is what you're saving so this would be I have to multiply the ninety five dollar price by something less than one so you figured if I am saving forty five percent that means I'm actually paying fifty five percent so if you find now fifty five percent and multiply 0 0.55 by the starting value of ninety five you'll see that we get that exact same answer but in one step instead of two Okay, so now I'd just like you to take a few moments to copy down these four examples, and we're going to look and see what this work actually represents if you were to use it in the context of a markup or a percent decrease, like a discount. So if you look at something like this, I'm multiplying two numbers, one of which is a decimal equivalent of some percent. Any of the ones that are being multiplied by a decimal less than one is going to be a discount. So the first thing that's helpful is to understand if it's a discount or if it's some sort of markup. So like this one where it's being multiplied by over one, that's making 110 bigger, versus this one that's being multiplied by under one is making 80 smaller, so in fact you're subtracting. So if it's over one, it's a markup, an increase of some sort. And then if it's under 1, and remember it's commutative, so just look at the order, it doesn't matter. This is less than 1, so that's going to be some sort of discount, some sort of decrease. This one's over 1, so that's going to be an increase. And now we got to think, by what percent is this thing changing? So if you're paying 95% of an $80 item, how much are you saving? Well, that's 5%. So this is a discount of 5% on an $80 item. Okay. This thing is an increase. Well, what's the difference between 1 and 1 1.2? That's 0.2, which represents a 20% increase on $110.
Okay? This guy is a discount. You're paying 60% of 45. Therefore, you're being discounted 40% on a $45 item and then this is an increase so again it's 2.1 and you're taking that away from 1 so the difference is 1.1 which is actually a hundred and ten percent increase on ninety dollars so this is this would end up being double the cost of what it was plus a little more okay so now do now number one I'm only asking you to do the same thing for these two 0.45 times 65 and then 1.2 times 90 so here because the decimal is less than one it's a discount and if you're paying 45 percent then it's off 55 percent on a $65 item okay this guy is above one so it's a markup an increase um, of 20 percent on a $90 item. Oops, $90 item. And the reason you need to be pretty good with this new type of thinking is that it makes questions like the following ones a little bit easier to work with. So now you're given a retail price, you're given the percentage that it has been marked off, and you're asked to find that original. So in that percent of change proportion, you're looking for that bottom value. But that involves a lot of flipping if you think about the way that the proportion works. So in other words, if this if you're looking at this in the context of what we just learned, if something has been marked up 20%, that means that you're paying 1.2 of something. So we know that the retail price, which is after it's been marked up, is 50. So once the thing has been marked up, we're going to be paying 20%, which is this, in addition to um, what it was before. And the thing is, we don't know what it is before, so we're just going to call that, you know, we're going to define the wholesale price as W. So we're thinking 120% of some number is 50. So this means that I have a number, I multiply it by itself, and then a little bit more of itself, and it's 50. So a reasonable number, the wholesale price is lower than the retail, so we should be getting something less than 50% um, that essentially uh, has been marked up. So how we solve algebraically for this, if we want to isolate W, is we depot the 1.2. So that W is how many times 1.2 will go into 50, which is uh, 41, according to this, $41 and 67 cents. So you figured if you wanted to do a quick check, um, the difference between the retail and the wholesale is um, this amount. So is $8.33 or 33 cents, 20% of this amount. So do we think if this is my change and this is my starting value, does this amount represent 20% increase? So if this works out to be true, we're good. So we can look this way, we can look this way, and because this is a rounded value, they'll be slightly close, but might not exactly match. So is 8.33 20% of 41? Here's one way you can answer it. Uh, so this, if we multiply it by 100, ends up pretty close to 20%. Again, it's not going to be exact because this wholesale price was in fact rounded. Okay, So again, if we tried it with this one, I'm thinking the same thing. A tax is something in addition. So we're thinking, what is the pre-tax price if after taxes we're paying 115? So after taxes is 115. And we'll say the pre-tax price, we'll say is P. So before taxes, he's paying 7.5%. This is a markup, so 7.5%, remember we're dividing by 100, is actually 0 0.075. So if it's being marked up, we're going to add that percentage to the 1. So here's the equation that you could use to solve for the pretext price. So again, we're going to depot this markup as a decimal depot this markup as a decimal. So the pretext price is going to be something less than what you paid after, after tax, so 115 divided by 1.075 gives us something that is in fact less than, and we're going to round to the nearest hundredth, what it was after taxes. Okay, So now you try two on your own, do not number two, and then we'll talk. Okay? So with this one, you have a discounted price. So again, a discount, remember, is a percent decrease, and a tip is a percent 
increase. So if you're doing the equivalent decimals, this you should have been multiplying by some decimal less than one. So 30% off means that you're paying 60% or 70%, sorry. So to find the original price, you figure the discount is 35 and 35 is 70% of some number. So one way you can think about it is like this. We'll say D is the discounted price and then you depot the 0.7 and the original price now should be above what the discounted price was. And in fact, something less than one will go into 35 more than 35 times. So it looks like we're okay. So 50% or $50 is reasonable for the original price. Okay. Right. This guy is a tip. So we have the after tip total and we're trying to find the price of the meal. So we figured this number is... 18% more than some original value, and we'll call that P also. So 18% is 0.18. So if this has been added, we know that we're going to multiply by something more than one, and this is the thing we're trying to find, okay? So you depot the 1.18, you depot the 1.18, and the price of the meal before the tip had been added is this quotient when I divide so $42 about and 88 cents, which is reasonable because the price before the tip uh, will be less than the price with the tip.